Hi guys, it's Lucian here, and um, I said I'd bring you some more gameplay footage about um, Army of Two, and here we are, this is like the whole thing. Um, I'm not going to cut it out, The only I've cut out a couple of bits, which is just the menus uh, in between each little section, and I was asked to do that because uh, yeah, they didn't want to show those things until the game is released, so again, literally all it is though is like an XP menu, bit of scoreboarding, blah blah blah, it's that kind of stuff. So here we are, entering the game, Benito Martinez, Al Rodrigo. Uh, I'd tell you, right, one of the main things I wanted to address today, so I'm having a bit of, I always find it hard starting videos, I don't know what to say, when I don't have a sort of plan in mind of what I was going to talk about, it's just free, freestyling. Um, you guys may have noticed that my videos this week have been a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more fun, a little bit less serious than I normally do. And, um, you know, I think half of what it is, is I've been playing my looting gaming channel and it's kind of forced me to kind of uh, commentate in a slightly different way. And uh, I don't mind it. I mean, for example, my demo playthrough that I did of Army of Two, I went into that thinking like, okay, I'm just going to have fun with this. I didn't want to take it too serious. I didn't want to sort of, you know, I just thought I'm going to go into this, play this game and just have a laugh. And also from watching the trailer, I had a fairly reasonable impression of how this game was going to be. Now, people have said, oh, Lutin, you were quite critical on the demo, but with the actual uh, review that you gave the game, you were quite different. Well, the only thing that I could say to that is, yeah, that's generally what happens when you play a demo. It's only a small representation of the full game. And, you know, when I went down to EA this week, we spent the whole day playing the game. Um, and something else as well, people were going like, oh, we're not really sure whether you're sincere looting, like, you sponsored by EA, you, you blah blah blah. And it's like, no, they haven't, like, paid us to make any of this thing, you know, we just literally got to play the game and then say whatever the hell we want about it. And if you, you know, if you disagree with me, there's other people, um, like, uh, Vicstar and, uh, Wintergore, and they were probably posting their own... Uh, footage, their own representations, and talking about the game as well. So if you can want to, you know, compare, you can go and check out those guys and see what they have to say about the game. Um, but personally, I mean, I have to say, when we were down there in EA, everyone else kind of midway through the day had kind of like they were chatting and sort of sitting around the studio and kind of, you know, some of the other producers that were there were kind of like chatting amongst themselves, etc. I, I was playing this game. I couldn't stop playing this game. Everyone else is like chatting, chatting, chatting. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it through again, guys. I'm gonna play it through again. I was just, I was loving this game. I just think it's so much fun. And you know, the thing is, what's wrong with that? I didn't understand. Everyone's going like, oh, Luton, you know. You know, you're so positive, you can't possibly have a, a good rep, you know, you can't be telling the truth, and it's like, what, it, it, that says a lot about me, doesn't it, really, when when I'm enjoying something, and people are like, Luton's enjoying something, this can't be real, he must be lying, <laughs> it's, it's like, no, I actually like the game, I think as well, yeah, here we go, ba 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 go down, and then, oh, this is great, hang on, I don't know if I can hear the commentary right here, Anyway, this bit here, I don't know if you can hear because it it's too quiet, but um, they say something about the red barrels here, and they're like, red barrels, red barrels always explode. And then your teammates are like, they don't always explode, and it's like, you don't play many games, do you? And it's like, they're, they're referencing computer games like, in a game, which is just, there's loads of bits like that. This game is not serious. And um, I think that's what's so much fun about it. I, I like a lot of games. Um, I think it was, who was it made a video? It was, um, oh damn, who was it? Someone made a Battlefield video talking about, oh please rem remember for me, somebody tell me, someone made a video very recently, I wanted to shout him out but I can't remember who it was, um, saying are you a Battlefield player, are you a Battlefielder or are you a gamer? Um, and, and that's the thing is like, um, oh here we are, overkill, represent, you're just invincible, look at this, <laughs> this is so much fun this game. Um, it's totally over, this game is so over the top, it's just over the top and stupid. It's stupid in the way that, like, Steven Seagal films are stupid. It's stupid in the way that, like, in Commando, Arnold Schwarzenegger takes out, like, however many, what is it, like, 60 people with one M60, barely reload, it doesn't reload or anything, or take any hits at all. This game is like that, it's just, it's, it's stupid but in a good way. It's like funny, you know, it's a fun game. But as I said, the interesting thing is the kind of gameplay is like full on, um, but then when you get to these cutscenes, they're like, ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. But um, the other thing that I said, I, I said, I genuinely was surprised because in the cutscenes, I expected them to be cheesy and awful and bad. Like, for example, Call of Duty. 
Jesus bad. Christ, they're so bad. bad. When I was watching some of the Call of Duty cutscenes, I'm sitting there like with my hand in my mouth going, oh God, the dialogue is so bad. And in this game, I I was, I don't know, I was just sitting watching going, yeah, okay, this is like kind of believable within the context of the storyline. Um, they don't, they, you know, the characters swear, but not in... And not in awkward places. Uh, like, I always remember in Killzone 3, I can't remember his name, the, I'm very bad with names in general, the, the, you can tell that was from, from the uh, other commentator. I'm just rubbing, I remember things really well, but just badly with names. I'm, I suck really bad. Um, Killzone 3, though, the scientist in Killzone 3, and he, all the way through the game, he's really well-spoken, and he... You know, he makes a lot of really intelligent comments about what's going to happen in the war and blah, blah, blah. And then at one point, he says something like, blah, 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 fuck something or other. And, um, you know, that, it's all right for me to say it, by the way, because it's a kind of quote. <laughs> um, but it's so out of character. It's just really, really out of character. And therefore, when I was watching it, I was like, huh, that's kind of weird and really killed the dialogue. But these guys... They're kind of like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. You know, they've got those kind of, they've got like big attitudes, big character. So it kind of fits within their character to sort of be that way. But the other thing is it's not, they don't do it too much. And that's a big deal. They don't use it in like weird and inappropriate places. It kind of fits within the context of the dialogue they're saying. Whoever did the dialogue in this game, I think they wrote it quite well. Um, I mean, it's not it's not Shakespeare, all right? It's it's nothing like that. Um, it's not like the best piece of prose that you've ever heard in your life or anything. Um, it's 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 action movie dialogue, but it's written in a way that just kind of works. Um, I don't quite know. You you just have to watch it and play for yourself, seriously. Um, but. I, I never found myself thinking, oh, Jesus, this is awful. Whereas with other games, I have. That's all I can say. That's all I can say to really explain it. I can't really break it down. Um, but anyway, I mean, look at as well the graphics right here. Gorgeous. Look at this light as you come through here. See those beams, sunny, and all the shadowing as we move right here. It's built on Frostbite 2, so you have Frostbite 2 graphics. Um, it felt really excellent. It doesn't have the same destruction level as uh, Battlefield. It's nothing like that, but it has elements of destruction, which is good because it helps you feel more connected with the environment. That's the thing. Um, and that's what so many games don't do. They don't have that kind of element of destructibility. or And so it doesn't really feel like you're having any kind of proper impact in the game. Um, you know, for example, it always used to frustrate the hell out of me when on shooting games in the past, um, you would have, for example, a glass lamp and yet you could fire your gun at that glass lamp and it would just it was like it was made of concrete and that for me like destroys any sense of immersiveness in the game so in a game like this where they're using frostbite 2 where you can have actually an impact on things around you and when you fire it will take chip pieces out of concrete and bullets and stuff like that um, it does help you just to feel that little bit more involved in the world around you um, I mean you still know you're in a game you still know it's artificial but it just helps you feel like a little bit more like the actions that you take have some kind of involvement in the, the situation around you and that for me is a good thing now you can see right here this is where we sort of split up so you can choose uh, certain sections of the game you can choose where you want to go do you want to take this do you want to take that on the demo we see like okay do we go on the low ground or do you take the helicopter up and so off he goes over the top and I've got to go the other way around now, uh, I chose this way because I'm playing with the AI right now, and you may have noticed up to this point we've had loads of battles, but didn't struggle at any point. It is an early stage in the game, but as I say, I have actually played further through. Um, I can't talk about that because it's not out, but um, like I say, I always felt like the AI supported you well, and um, I, I didn't feel at any point. Obviously, you've got the explosions right here, so take that down. Uh, the sights and optics that you choose don't necessarily... Um, you know, make a, a significant difference in terms of, like, you don't look down the sight. Like, I kept thinking, like, oh, which one should I choose? It, it makes a difference to the gun stat in terms of, like, for example, accuracy or whatever. I change over to the Magnum right here. This is such a great weapon. You can take off, like, if you're at the right range. Yeah, I think I took his head clean off there. And that's the other thing. It has the kind of same... It has the same kind of body impacting that you had with uh, Call of Duty World at War when, you know, for example, if you hit someone in the right way or they exploded, taking arms and legs off. It's like that in this game. If you hit a guy with a high caliber weapon, like a sniper rifle, if you hit a guy with a sniper rifle in the leg or the arm, it's coming off. Uh, same with the big, you know, the shotguns at close range. Anything at close range, actually, I think will really damage them hard. 
and this is a kind of uh, this is a bit of a fighting section so we're in the kind of dusty scrub ground area this is the sort of farmland cartel area before we work our way through into the main compound further along and I'm just being a little bit cautious and there we are up on the rooftop there how the hell did I not see that guy see now I've played it through and I've look look he's, I didn't see him I was just I have to say as well something else that I didn't point out come on there we go take him down Something else that I... Wow, that bike is really nicely designed as well. It's just good looking back, you see. When you hind hindsight, you notice a lot of things and just being able to look back and review stuff. You know, actually, I said before, right, getting cover is really important because you see how I'm not taking cover right now? I'm just sort of standing here. Oh, that guy's head was off. See how I'm just kind of standing here and uh, so I'm on the right shoulder? And someone pointed this out in my video, they were like, Luton, you really criticised the, the fact that you couldn't switch shoulders in the demo, but in the game, you didn't feel like it made such a... or you didn't comment on it in the review. And um, the reason I didn't comment on it is because... Uh, do that guy's leg, guy's leg... oh, legs, arm, they're all off, they're all off. I just go, ha, 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 finish him, finish him. <laughs> you see what I mean about this game? It, come on, knife him, get the man down. <laughs> this game is just, oh my god, oh, 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 I'm taking big damage. Don't reload in the open, take cover. Dota in. Jeez, oh my god. Oh my god. Overkill, overkill now. Overkill now. Yes, yes, yes. Die, die. <laughs> Look at that guy, he went flying. <laughs> um, this game, yeah, sorry. Okay, what I was trying to say, but, oh for god's sake. Oh my lord. What the hell was that? <laughs> uh, this is what it was like when I was playing this game. I was just playing and laughing and laughing and enjoying the game. Oh my god, I still haven't got them all. I suck at this. Oh, come on! <laughs> no! Get him! Get him! Oh, dear god. <laughs> I think you can start to see what it is I enjoy about this game. It's just fun it's just silly and uh, I gotta say that what I found about the the cover thing was that basically when you're covering when you're actually using the cover function it will auto put you into the correct position so that you can see but what I was doing earlier was I was just standing there and I wasn't taking cover properly so it just puts me on the right shoulder so it's actually me who was making the mistake there but when you actually use cover and you work point to point throughout the game and you put yourself in a position it works fine and when I was doing the demo I didn't really get that so that's the deal with it Another thing that I should say was what I was trying to say before. Um, this version tested was 360 Xbox, and um, I have never touched an Xbox. So all the way through this gameplay, I was kind of like, oh crap, what, what's this button right here? LB, what the hell is that? It's like, <laughs> you know, I actually kind of like the triggers on the X Xbox 360 controller. They were a bit more like sprightly, um, and they had a little bit more kind of triggerness to them and compared to the sort of shoulder pads of the PS controller, which they really are more like pads, but the Xbox controllers, they're really like, kind of like triggers, which is, is kind of nice, I can imagine they uh, work a little bit better in certain situations. And it, you can see this skip coming up, and I was like, what the hell is this button? I don't know how to skip. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's why some of my gameplay, where I'm starting to try and aim, and I kind of go all over the place, it's because I kind of wasn't used to that sort of controller, and I was like, ugh, what is this thing that I'm holding, I don't know how to play. Um, so that affected me slightly. To be honest though, considering I'd never even used it before, I thought I did pretty good throughout my gameplay, so yeah, it's all, it all comes out in the wash, doesn't it? Um, but as I say, coming back to the whole movie sort of aspect, uh, that's really how I kind of quantify this game. Um, I am a serious person, alright? I just am. And everyone's always going, lighten up and blah blah blah. No, I just, that's not me. You know, I, I, I enjoy being serious. I don't know. I just like it. Um, if, well, I don't just like it. It's who I am. You know, it's who I am. I, I don't need to justify myself to all of you. Anyway, <laughs> um, so, but the point I'm making is that I enjoy serious things. I enjoy sort of drama and I enjoy scientific things. I enjoy documentaries a lot. Uh, I watch a lot of things. I read a lot. And, um, but does that mean that I don't enjoy, you know, crazy ass movies with Steven Seagal where he'll go like sliding along the floor, defying physics and then take out like 10 guys and blah, blah, blah. No, you know, I love insane movies like that. I enjoy uh, Ghosts of Mars with whatever his name is, Ice Cube running around with two like platinum coated Uzis, like it's just like the stupidest film you've ever seen in your life. I enjoy utter trash things like that because it makes me laugh and because it's fun and because it's just the great kind of thing now 
Army of Two, Devil's Cartel, is not in that category. All right, it's not trash. It's it's a good, well-made game uh, with a narrative that I think works well in the context of it. But it has the element of those kind of things where it's good, like rolling fun. You want to just keep on flying. Keep, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And it's like that right now. You see in this gameplay all the way through. Whenever I was playing, you know, I mean, you guys might have seen in some of my playthroughs or other videos that often I I tend to take a kind of careful approach to my gameplay. I'm kind of like, okay, I'm going to outthink this situation. Uh, I'm going to work out how to flank. And for example, okay, perfect example, my Far Cry 3 gameplay. All right. If you watch my Far Cry 3 playthrough, um, several people have kind of... See how I move up from cover to cover there? That's really nice. And I think if I move up again here in a moment, yeah, see how he just moves? Yeah, And he's got this kind of nice sort of movement from piece to piece to piece. I'm not saying this is like 100% unique. There's other third-person games that have this kind of feel to them. Probably running out in front of three guys right there was not the best plan, but it kind of said, oh, 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 I'm taking a beating. You can take a fair few hits before you sort of go down, but you just have to be a little bit careful of it. But again, you see, that's, it kind of, that kind of highlights what this kind of game is. It's not designed to be irritating, because if you ran out and every time you took a shot you went down, it would become frustrating and annoying, and you would be more careful about moving forward. But that's not how they've designed the game. They've designed the game to be fun and kind of fast-paced, because they want you to just kind of get in the mix and, and like, have fun blowing the crap and, you know, shooting and shooting and shooting. So you can take a couple of hits like I'm doing right now. You can see I take a few hits, I, I auto-regen, I get back in the fight. And so it means even in, like, heavy firefights, you can kind of keep moving, keep moving, because your guy's going to be, like, this tough, tough specialist and he's got all this gear and blah, blah, blah. And the realism of this, it, you know, this game is not about realism, all right? It's about just having a fun shooting time, and I miss that, you know, I really do. When you look back at games and how they used to be, especially shooting games, and you look to now, I mean, obviously there's always going to be this situation. I know there's a guy behind this. Yeah, there he is. Ah, oh, and his arm's off. <laughs> it's just, I just, like I say, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I enjoyed the game. Is that such a crime? Um... <laughs> I, I enjoyed the game, and I tell you what as well, I'm as surprised as anybody else, um, because we all know that uh, I couldn't get that thing working. Oh, I think I make a categorical fail in a second. I, whoa, span that guy right around. I think I make an absolute disaster. I don't know, or maybe I don't, maybe I don't, maybe it's not this, this secret. Oh, 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 I'm getting hit bad. Where is that coming from? Here, most likely. No, hit those, hit those red barrels, hit those red barrels. Um, anyway, right, okay, let's get back onto it. So, yes, I I like the game. And um, I can totally understand where people are coming from when they sort of hear my commentary, my review, and they go, wow, this is unusually positive for looting. This is because I'm often so harshly critical. Um, but you see, I'm often critical within the context of what a title is or what I feel, you know, what I feel like its remit should be. So what I feel like it's it should be come on head off head off there you go go down my son um, like I say if you look at my Far Cry gameplay though and you see how tactical and slow I am I move from like point to point working around our scouter base before I go in and clear it um, I try to work out the positions of all enemy so that I know exactly their movements and I can kind of work out a tactical plan of how to approach that base how to break it down how to analyze it. And then I go in and I clear the base step by step, super clean. This game, absolute opposite. I will just literally run in going, and that is a real, you know, it's a great, it's a nice relaxation. I mean, God, it's a, it's a real sort of a re relaxing tool to just be able to kind of rock it up and get in the mix, basically. I can imagine, like, well, when I was playing this cop with uh, another guy there, Michael, and, um, it's just like you're almost racing one another to get through it. You know, you're like, how many kills can I get compared to the other guy? And again, that just reminds me of like gaming uh, in my youth when you know you're against other people and you're sort of you know battling to see who can do the best, who can get the most kills, etc., etc. I find it really weird how this gun's burst fire, but anyway, knife to bah. Um, and so yeah, that's that's pretty much what I got to say about it. Is that um, I, I, I kind of wanted to follow this up anyway. I was going to do these videos anyway, but this kind of presented an opportunity for me to really talk about it um, because I do understand. I, I understand that when I make a commentary where I didn't find a huge amount wrong with the game, um, you know, people are going to be like, "Well, that's that's unusual," especially for me who is so critical about so many things. 
But, um, you know, I just felt like, like I say, within the context of the title and what it, where I feel it fits in terms of the kind of games people will play, I felt like it did most of the things right that it should do. Um, I think there were so many situations that it could have failed on. And the AI, that was a perfect example. The AI was a really excellent example. Um, I always generally hate computer AI. They're stupid, they do annoying things. And I talked on my on my looting gaming channel, my second channel, I do a little series with a guy called uh, Heartless, he's 666 or Heartless. He has a Let's Play channel, he's a very funny guy, really great videos, I love the hell out of them. Um, and so we did a little chat about kind of general gaming topics. And one video we just did, we were talking about AI in games, and we were talking about things like Sheva in Resident Evil, we were talking about Navi in uh, Zelda, all these kind of little people that kind of can really get on your wick um, and so you know in a game like this where you're basically supported by an AI character you would think man that would be so annoying like you you imagine them to kind of sit back all the way through and just kind of not really get involved or they kind of lay down fire but they don't actually kill anyone um, or they run forward and they just then they get taken out too easily they don't take cover well enough or whatever and and so you generally feel like they would be an irritating weight around your neck um, the reason why in my review thing I talked so much about the AI, I talked it up so much, is because it genuinely didn't have any problems. Watch this gameplay. At what point did my character screw up or get in the way or not do something right or not support me? You saw him moving up in front of me in positions and, f you know, when I give him directions, come to me, he'll come to me. If I say go forward, take fire and lay down fire, he'll, he'll lay down fire. Uh, when I've played the game with the AI and if I give him a command, he does that command. He follows me, he moves up, he stays with you. He does what the character should do. And my, I played this through twice, and well, I played it through more than twice throughout the day when we were actually playing it down the studio. Um, but I played it through with the guy that I was playing it there with, Michael. All right, so we played the game through a couple of times together. So I was playing a human co-op. And then I said, okay, I'm gonna play for comparison's sake, uh, the AI through. So I did both things because I wanted to be able to compare and I wanted to do this. I wanted to give you guys the comparison. And I played through both levels and uh, at no point when I was playing with the AI character did I feel like I was lacking anything. I never felt like, oh my God, when I was playing with Mike, like it was, you know, he was doing this bit so much better or whatever. Um, it was all handled perfectly well. So, you know, to me, that's pretty unusual. I mean, it's not it's not unique or anything. There's, there's plenty of other games where you have AI which, which handle things well. But for this game, it's so critical to have that ability because, you know, it's a, it's a partnership game. It's based on this kind of cooperation. And if you didn't have an AI that was capable of cooperating in that way, this game would become instantly tedious. This situation right here is a perfect example. Let's just watch how this gameplay plays out. Now, with no doubt, the human player is probably going to take the lead because you're the human player and therefore you're going to have more of a sense of awareness and generally you're going to have a plan in your mind. You're going to be able to move forward more quickly than perhaps the AI is going to be aware of. But the AI will lay down fire. The enemies don't constantly target. Just look, see, he's right here. He's putting fire down. Let's see how he goes. Right, see, he's moving up with me. Okay, taking out this guy here. See where he is? He's kind of moved up with me. He's taking cover. He's laying fire down that right-hand side. See, look, see how the enemy is firing at him. And I'm saying lay down, suppressing fire. He's putting fire down towards them. There we go, this guy over here. Gotta get this guy. I think I've run in on him. Yeah, come on. Smudge, smudge, ah, 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 ah. You can't see what happened. I think I stabbed him in the back. That's what, I tell you what, that's one little thing that I didn't think of, was that sometimes when I was doing the knife melee kills and stuff, the camera angle would be a bit weird. But that tended to be like, if you're close to a wall or something, it does the animation, but because you're at, you know, you're sort of in a kind of enclosed environment, the camera perspective can go a bit kind of bizarre. But again, honestly, it's like a minor, minor, minor thing. It's nothing, it's nothing that makes you think, oh my god, it's so annoying. Like, it really doesn't make any odds at all. See, see, look at him right here. He's moving forward. He's taking points. He's getting in. Look, look. I went to, I went to save my character. I didn't need to. He, he took that guy down himself. He melleyed him down. 
And this is what I mean, like they handle themselves perfectly well. And there's situations, for example, um, the same as in other Army of Two games, uh, you do it in the training mission as well, where you have to do like a flank maneuver. And what that means is that basically you'll have like a heavy gun or something that's laying down fire on your position. And in order to take that guy out, you have to use like a team flank maneuver. So what's going to happen is one of your guys is going to lay down suppressing fire and basically distract that target. And then you or the AI will flank around and clear that enemy out. And again, that's quite, a, you know, that's that's an involved thing. They need to be on, you know, they need to be on the roll in order to do that. And uh, again, it's something that they did time and again perfectly well. So, it, you know, when I'm calling out in my review and saying the AI is so good, la la la, that's because I really felt it was. You know, I, I'm critical of things like that because from experience, from long, painful experience, I know how hellishly annoying it is to have AI counterpart team members that just suck the hell look at other titles um i'm going to mention call of duty not because i have a chip on my shoulder about it because i've said before now that i have enjoyed cod games in the past but one thing that i really get irritated about in cod is the ai dear lord how many times have you been in a situation in that game where you have like four or five soldiers around you and they do nothing at all they just sit there like firing it's, it's like they're in die hard 2 and they're firing blanks that's what it's like in cod when you're trying to work with a team they do nothing and all all the enemy they all target you it's like they all got auto locking aimbots they all shoot at you in this game that doesn't happen they will shoot at your partner they will shoot at you if there's more of you they'll shoot at those guys as well so they don't constantly do that that's something that really needs to change in fps games because it's so unrealistic that they just single out the human player and focus on that guy all the time and that's another thing that makes this game kind of enjoyable is that they will actually target different people um so that for me is another reason why it kind of shows that the enemy ai is you know it's kind of developed as much just as the uh, the human sort of you know your partner ai would be I really oh this bit was ridiculous. I was kind of I was I was kind of screwing around. I was kind of like got to reload. Got to, oh I, I'm just going to stand here and reload. Ah, but did you see that was a great example there? While I was reloading, they were still distracted by my AI uh, sort of teammates down there. So they're firing at them, and I, they didn't even notice me. I was reloading. You might think, well that's stupid. You know they should see you. Well not necessarily. If they're taking fire from down there, their attention is diverted. I wasn't shooting at them. And see look right here. See how my Bravo teammates. See look he moved up. He was laying down fire on those guys. He actually took that guy out over there. So this is what I'm saying is that, you know, it really does play out how I described. Um, I wasn't just sort of giving it a massive big up because that's what I was planning to do. Genuinely enjoyed it, really did. Um, but I mean, you know, when I gave my review for Crisis 3, it was largely positive, but there were a few elements there that were not quite on par. Whereas with, with this game, I say it's all about context. Um, you know, if I had to rate this game as a serious tactical shooter, would I give it, you know, a, a good review? Probably not, because it's not, that isn't what it is. It's a fun, like, roller coaster game. It's a game where you kind of want to charge forward going like, get yala, you know, and just start firing on the enemy. You know, you, you want to just go for the brutal kills. You want to just lay down the fire until your clip is empty. Uh, not clip magazine. I know people get really finicky about that. Um, anyway. Let's move on to the last section here. I'm just going to commentate on this last section. So, what's happened is one of our guys has been injured and he's back there. You can choose at that point to either defend him or go back up here. The hostage runs off. Why, I couldn't tell you. Um, she's already been captured by these people and then she runs away, which is kind of, I don't understand why, but she's got her reasons, I'm sure. Maybe she left her handbag on top of the building or something, you know. Um, so, we're moving up here. <laughs> I'm breaking out my magnum again. Take his arm. Oh dear, no, oh, no more. <laughs> no more, I don't know, what what do you use two hands for? Eating? <laughs> no more eating for you, my friend. Um, anyway, so you can see this is the flanking thing that I was saying about moving up here. I take out the guy. Here's the bizarre camera angle again. Um, right, getting on to the MMG, which I assume is mounted machine gun. And now we lay down the heavy, heavy fire. These little sections are good fun. Um, you can actually still take hits and stuff like people come up behind you. I think I was on one of these and some guy... Oh yeah, it's this bit here, right, yeah. Um, when I was playing this through a different time, I stayed on this gun too long and I kept... I stayed on the gun and then they actually come up for you. You start getting enemies come up and they'll come up behind you and if you don't get off it, they'll actually shoot you. Um, so I had to get off that in time. This is a little sort of cutscene section here, slow-mo. You have to shoot the driver out. <laughs> and there he goes out. 
and you can see my team members over there, the AI. Now, again, another thing to point out, even though I'm mopping up the enemy right here, I can tell you I played from both points of view in this section of the game, and when you're defending, it is hard going. They're all coming up from you on the, the left, to my left right now, there's a crane, and they're laying down fight, these guys see this guy with an RPG there. So they're shooting at you all from all different directions, and it's hard to be on this gun and keep the fire going at all times. Here's the Frostbite 2 in action, look. So they're all crashing down and stuff. Um, and it smashes through things and things. Um, you see these concrete barriers as well, you can see how I've like, destroyed some of those by shooting through. So, you know, like I say, the Frostbite 2 is not as um, involved as it is in Battlefield 3. You can't destroy things, but then let's face it, Battlefield 3, the destruction is not as good as uh, Bad Company 2 either. So, you know, it's all sort of part and parcel, you've got to weigh up the things. Right, we're moving on up to the top right now to rescue our lady. Oh, that's his kneecap gone. He's down on the ground. You know, I, I played this, look, this guy, again, oh, shot in the back. I played this through three times and I always forgot this guy was here. There he is, he's hiding, you're going down, oh, oh. Is he down? Put a bit of a uh, grenade over there. Ah, <laughs> oh, this game. Right, now we rescued our lady friend, uh, we have to pop her up onto the heli. So she's going to do that in a minute when she decides to cooperate. Oh yeah, I have to sort of trigger the thing, there we go. Up she goes, and then we have to hop in. Now uh, the sniping, the sniping was tricky. Um, I have to say, the, you move on right here, you pick up a sniper, and the idea is that you cover. But the moving helicopter, um, it's going to be one of those things where it just looks like I'm not very good at it. But if you actually play it yourself, you'll soon discover that it's actually not as easy as it seems. Um, you're moving very constantly and when you zoom in like this the sensitivity kind of changed so I couldn't get on those targets as quickly as I wanted to um, so it made kind of moving around a little bit tricky see right here I'm trying to hit onto these guys but it, it really was not um, as easy as it could have been but I think uh, given time you get used to the kind of movement of the gun right here and these guys see, see this is what I mean I'm going in on targets the people that are killing those enemies are AI watch this <laughs> oh, I got him and didn't zoom in. I was hoping to get a clear, clear headshot right there. I'll get one of these guys in a mo. There you go. Whoop, whoop. Oh, he went a different way. That's that's not fair. It's cheating. Come on. Take him down. Oh, there you go. Arm off. And. Oh. <laughs> Um, so anyway, that's been my little uh, overview, my little review of the game up to this point. I hope you've kind of enjoyed. I hope it's clarified a few things for some people. Um, and I think it's all oh, head down again. I Like I say, I just enjoyed this game. I enjoyed this game. I've got a copy. I'm going to get cracking on it. Um, at the end of the day, all right, people can believe whatever they want to believe. I've said things about things in the past and people have said, oh, looting, blah, 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 blah. I, you know, at the end of the day, people can think whatever they want to think about me. Um, I know in my mind what I believe, what I think is the right thing to do. People have said about, you know, having integrity before. Um, I think that's an important thing. And it's something that I always try to stick with. I always try to give my honest, honest opinion. And this is why in the past I've said things that people don't agree with. Um, but if I didn't say what I actually thought, then it just compromises everything else that you do. So when I give reviews about these games... I will tell you what I think. I will tell you whether I think it's good or bad. This game, I loved it. I thought it was a hell of a lot of fun. And quite frankly, I would have bought this game because it's a nice change of pace. It's a really great fun game. Tons of action involved. It's just like playing a good damn action movie. And who can really hate that? <laughs>